Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. We've been talking so much this week about worry, how not to worry. We've dealt a lot with the subject of money. Yesterday you spoke about how to deal with a, an inferiority complex and what others think about us. I guess really, Colin, what you've been saying all week is that if we change our thinking and adopt spiritual principles, this changes our circumstances. Uh, it does. Um, it, it Ultimately, things change around us because things have changed within us. The problem is always within you, isn't it? How you are going to cope with the situations that arise. Um, we can't control the circumstances sometimes that happen to us, but we need to react in the right and positive way so that those circumstances can then be changed. That's very important. Now, I want to, I want to talk about worry in a general sense for a moment. Do you remember Martha and Mary? Martha said that um, Jesus should make Mary join in dealing with all the practical things that she was concerned about. It says in the scripture, that Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Now, how did Jesus answer this? Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will be not be taken away from her. Now, was Jesus endorsing the fact that life is just sitting around having a Bible study at the feet of Jesus and not getting on with the practical work? No, no, no. Jesus wasn't intending to imply that at all. What did he say to Martha? Martha, you are worried about many things. In other words, Martha was a warrior. Not a warrior, but a warrior. She was always worrying about this and that. Always getting flustered and fearful. She was that kind of a person. Whereas Martha was of a different disposition. She was the one who listened to Jesus and trusted in what he said. Now, you can have some Christians who are like Martha. They're warriors. They always worry. They always react in a negative situation. They're the ones who say the glass is half empty, not half full. They always look at every situation uh, with a worried attitude, with an anxious attitude. They anticipate problems. They expect the negative, And so they are not surprised when the negative happens. Why not? Because they reap what they sow. And this is a spiritual principle that Jesus and other New Testament writers outline again and again. We get what we expect. That's faith. But you see, faith can be negative as well as positive. If you anticipate the negative, you will get the negative. You can see this, you know, um, people expect sickness and they get sick and then they say, I always knew it would happen. Well, that's negative faith. If there's flu around, oh, I must be careful I don't catch it, which is the opposite of the, of, uh, the sort of faith position. I am not going to have that. It is not going to come anywhere near me in the name of Jesus. So you can have a faith attitude towards circumstances, you can have a worried, anxious attitude. 
Now, what God wants is for the Marthas to become Marys. You see, what the Marthas do is they try to justify themselves by saying, well, I'm just one of those workers. I may not have great faith, but at least I'm working and working and working and working and getting the job done. But Jesus says, well, that's not the better way. The better way is to trust me uh, and not to get so worried and flustered and to think that everything is going to come out right because of what you do through your hard work. Now, of course, Jesus is not advocating that you don't do the practical things. Jesus is intensely practical in all of his teaching. But he is talking about this attitude. Do not have a negative attitude. If you have a negative, worried, fearful, anxious attitude, all you would do is is actually cause yourselves a whole lot of both emotional and even physical problems, but you will reap negativity all around you because you're sowing it. But if you have a positive mindset, a positive attitude, and you affirm the good things that Jesus affirms in his word because you sit at his feet, because you believe his word, then you're still going to have to get up and do the, do the stuff, do the work, and be faithful in doing what God asks you to do. But you will expect a good outcome, a fruitful outcome, a positive outcome, and that is exactly what will happen. It's not a question of the power of positive thinking. There's a lot of truth in that, but it's a question of of what Jesus teaches, which is really the power of positive believing. Some people who do have this glass-half-empty attitude to life, Colin, might be listening to you and saying, oh, why doesn't he get realistic? Life's just not like that. It's not a bed of roses. Nobody's suggesting that it is. I've been saying all this week that we're all going to have our faith challenges. We're all going to have uh, opposition. But you see, with what mindset do you approach those difficulties? If you have a negative mindset, you are easily overwhelmed by the tragedies, the traumas, the difficulties, the opposition that arises in your life from time to time. In fact, if you have a negative mindset, Everything seems worse than it is. Even minor things can seem a major need. And you feel that you're defeated almost before you start. Well, that's no way to live, is it? And it's certainly not the way for a Christian to live, for a person of faith to live. And, you know, there are people that would say, oh, well, I just can't help it. That's the kind of person I am. Well, okay, but you need to change. You need to be transformed from one degree of glory to another. You need a new mindset. Why? Because the scripture says we're to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Now, let me me just put this to you. Jesus says, do not worry. So where did the anxious thought come from? It didn't come from the mind of Christ. It didn't come from the Holy Spirit within you. It either came from your own flesh or it was a seed, a negative seed, a weed that the enemy tried to plant in your mind. Or it emanated from a negative person that is around you at the time, perhaps who has some kind of influence over you. We are to take the shield of faith against all those worrying, negative, distracting thoughts because they oppose our faith and confidence and trust in Jesus and in what he has said. Now, what did Jesus say about these worried attitudes? He says, by worrying, you can't add a single hour to your life. Uh, this, This business of worry is really very, very, very simple. Let me put it to you this way. How has worry ever helped you? And the answer to that is never. What has worry ever accomplished? Absolutely nothing. What has, what positive thing has anxiety ever caused in your life? None. Absolutely none. 
All these things are negative and destructive. We need to have our minds set on things above. That's what Paul says, not on earthly things. You see, worry is because we become obsessed with the situation, with our feelings, negative reactions towards those situations. And we really leave out God. And even when we pray, it's as I was saying before, we spend a few minutes thinking about our problems and saying amen at the end. Well, that's not prayer. That's not the prayer of faith. That's not speaking to the mountains and commanding them to move. That's not having a faith, an aggressive faith attitude towards the kind of problems that arise and telling them to be removed out of your life. That's not believing God to be your provider. Having those negative attitudes is not believing God to be your healer, to be your redeemer, to be the one who is your salvation. You see, this is what the whole life of faith is about. Faith in God leads to a faith mentality, leads to faith thinking, leads to faithful speaking about your circumstances. You see, one who worries will talk about the mountains, will describe the mountains, will become obsessed with the mountains instead of speaking to them, commanding them to move because he believes in his heart that if he does that, they will be moved as Jesus promises. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 